Hey creatives, today I have a fun and colourful technique that you can use with your pigment powders like the Ken Oliver Colour Burst Powders. And all you need to do to get started is a surface and some bits and pieces you probably already have around your house. For my surface I'm using two canvas boards and they're 5 by 7 inch or that's 12.5 by 17.5 centimetres. I've also raided my piggy bank for some coins and added some paper clips from my stationery stash. I'm also putting my key collection to good use. Plus I've got some washers and some scissors here and there. So grab anything that you think is going to give you a good interesting shape and that you're not worried about covering with pigment and water. I'm going to work on both of my canvas boards at the same time and I've got them side by side and I'm just spending a little bit of time arranging my bits and pieces over the surface. I want the area to be pretty crammed with items. And don't forget to let some of the items overhang the edges of the canvas. Once I'm happy with the layout, it's time to grab the pigment powders. Now you can use any of your water reactive powders that you might have, so brushes, infusions, anything like that will work. But today I'm going to be using Colour Burst. And the colours that I'm using are from the Caribbean Bright set. But as always, you'll find all the links below to the products that I've mentioned or I'm using in today's video. So just check out the description if you're looking for them. Right, let's get colouring. Now I'm purposely starting with two of the lightest colours from this set and that's the Chartreuse and the Tangerine. Now it's a little hard to see until I start adding water but I'm trying to tap out pigment, very small amounts of pigment and also trying to make sure that I am covering the surface. At this stage I don't want to tap out too much pigment but remember you can always add more if you need it. So start with small amounts and build up. If you've used this product before then you'll know that you only need a very small amount to get some really rich colour. It can be a bit deceptive, especially with the lighter colours. You might think you haven't got much on there but as soon as you start adding water you'll see it. So let's try it. Here's some water. I'm going to spray a very fine mist all over the surface. And let's see which areas I didn't cover with pigment. So I seem to have missed that right hand edge a little bit, so just add a little bit more pigment. That layer is finished for me, but I wanted to show you what else you could do. Seeing as these pieces are all kind of really interesting and covered with colour, it kind of seems a waste to just not use them. So I'm just going to remove them from my piece and I've covered a board with some craft mat just to make it easier to move it around. I've set my canvases aside to dry and we'll come back to those in a minute. But in the meantime, I'm just going to do some very rough printing with these great pigment covered pieces. And it's really simple, you don't have to overthink it at all. Just get a piece of paper and press the paper into those pigment coloured pieces. And it's quite a fun way to do a little bit of mark making. And you can save these pieces of paper for some other project for a different time. Now I'm going to see if I can get three impressions off of these pieces. So let's give it a go. So print number two. This one's going to be a lot fainter, so I'm going to do multiple presses on this one. To get print number three, I'm just going to add a little bit more water, see if I can mop up the last bits of that pigment before I wash all these bits and pieces. Right, my canvas boards are now dry. Now you could leave them as they are, because they look pretty cool already, or turn them into backgrounds, but I'm going to use the same technique again to add another layer of colour. Now this time I've got some old chipboard shapes and alphabets that I'm going to use to mask off areas on the board. And I'm working on the board separately now, because one board I'm going to use the fuchsia and orchid colour bursts, and the other board I'm going to use the lime green and the turquoise colour bursts. So let's have some fun and see how these turn out. And again I won't be wasting any of the colour because once I finish with those pieces on the boards I'm going to remove them and press some paper in them again just to see what kind of prints I get. And I'll just use the same papers again that I used in that first layer. Just a fun way of getting more out of your work. These pieces are chipboard so they do soak up the water in a slightly different way to the metal pieces that I was using in that first round. But you can still spritz them with water and get more diluted watercolour looks and mark making from them. And I even washed them out between this board and then reusing them for my greens. And I'll probably keep on reusing them until they finally fall apart on me. So as I play around with the layout for my second board, let me know if you have colour burst, brushes, infusions or some other 
water reactive pigment powders and let me know what your favorite ways to use them are I would love to hear I hope the techniques that I've been showing here are useful to you and if they are then please do like the video and feel free to share it as well plus if you aren't already please do subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss my next art video which will be out only in a couple of days time because I am now regularly posting art videos on Wednesdays and Sundays now on this panel we've got quite a few small gaps so for instance the spaces between the letters and also the spaces within the letters like the P's and the A so you need to keep an eye on those and make sure that you definitely have some pigment in those areas so for this one I'm using lime green and turquoise but I've also added in the chartreuse again as there's quite a lot of green in that color as well and don't forget you can also add more color after you've added the water so if you found that you have missed a piece, just tap a bit more colour into it. And again, I am not going to waste any of that colour that's on my chipboard pieces. So very quickly, let's have a look at that first printed layer where it's neat printing straight onto those pieces. So you get a lovely strong look. And then if you can compare it to the third piece of paper where I actually spritz the pieces first before printing, and that gives you a much more watered down and watercolour look. But both looks are fun and we'll just have to wait and see if I do anything with these pieces of paper. Both boards are now completely dry and as you can see from this close up, some of the details are just really lovely aren't they? I love all that multiple colour stuff and I love the texture that you get with the colour burst on the canvas board. I mean it's kind of texture without trying isn't it? So if you wanted to you could then go ahead and maybe draw on this. I did think about outlining the words on the green board. But in the end, I decided to leave it as it was. So have fun with this technique and don't forget to share with me the results of how you get on with it. I would love to see. Come back and tell me here on my channel or link me up on social media. And all my links are below. I'll catch you in a few days time. So thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you soon.